Hi guys and welcome back to another video. So uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys a few things. Right now on the left side of my iPad I have VizRef open and I haven't used VizRef since um, having my old iPad since that one had too limited of space so I never really used it as much as I would have liked to but VizRef I like to use to compile a bunch of references to have alongside with my Procreate. So I showed you guys like a sketch page thing that I like to do with like 17 members usually but I wanted to do something similar with Genshin characters so I'm going to put VizRef on the left side and have the Genshin emotes open and I just picked a few of them there's like a lot more that you can pick from but I just chose a few that I wanted to potentially draw for a video or just do as practice so I wanted to practice a little bit more of like expressions or just drawing some things for fun like drawing these Genshin emotes into my style but I'm going to keep um, the drawings that I'm going to be doing a little bit more on the rough side. I was thinking whether or not I was going to do more of like sketches or if I'm going to do colored versions or if I'm going to like fully render them. But we'll kind of see how that goes. So starting off with the characters. So the first person I'm going to be drawing is obviously Toma. I do have Sara at the top but I decided that I wanted to draw Toma first. Uh, just because I thought this expression was kind of cute and I usually don't do kind of like the shocked expression too too much I also didn't exaggerate it as much as like a lot of the chibi expressions look like for the emotes because obviously because they're emotes they're very emotive I guess like they're very more like exaggerated so that they can be used for you know different emotions and stuff that you want to use like during the chats and stuff that you can do in Genshin so yeah, I definitely don't exaggerate as much. Maybe in the future, if I ever attempt to do this again, maybe mm, we'll see. I, I don't know if I'll do it for like another video, but I definitely want to do it just for practice in general. So maybe I'll do it in my sketchbook or something. But yeah, we're just starting off with Toma. I decided to erase his body and shrink him a little bit because initially when I was thinking of like, how do I want to format everything? I was thinking maybe I could do three or four like maybe like four or five on the single canvas this is a five by seven canvas by the way with 350 dpi which is like usually the standard uh canvas that i usually use but i've kind of flipped it on its side so we can have a wider uh canvas space at least like horizontally so i wanted to see how many i could fit but i feel like the way how I drew the first two made it really limited how I could draw the third one and potentially a fourth one. So in the end, I'm only going to draw about three. <clears throat> um, yeah, I actually think this is a good exercise. I personally, majority of time, there's like few expressions that I tend to draw characters in and it's because like those are the ones that I usually like especially for like certain atmospheres and stuff. But there's definitely expressions that I usually don't touch upon because I don't draw my OCs in like certain situations or characters in certain situations that garner a specific expression and I feel like people who do more like uh, comic making or like just uh, more like character development for characters and stuff like that, character building, probably will touch upon that a lot more. So it's definitely something I would like to do a little bit more even though I guess like not in the near future. I don't think I'm going to be making like any kind of comic or webtoon or like any kind like anything of that sort that's more like story based. I definitely think making like a webtoon or a comic requires so much planning and a large skill set per se. It obviously it depends on what kind of a story or what kind of a uh, like layout and kind of like formatting and stuff you would like but I know a lot of webtoons like um, people tend to have like detailed characters and they know how to draw backgrounds and you know they do various um, scenes if that makes sense like the way they shoot the paneling and stuff is very very well done in my opinion I feel like I lack that because I don't watch a lot, a lot of movies or shows as much um, but I also am not too too interested in like story writing if that makes sense I just like drawing people in general and I feel like my OCs just kind of fit that niche what I like so yeah 
in terms of drawing, um, second person obviously is Xiao. So you guys probably noticed that I was gonna draw Xiao from the beginning because of the thumbnail. And I thought this one was cute. I was gonna draw potentially the one where he's eating snow or the one that he looks like he's shocked. But because I drew Toma with the shocked expression, there's even like another one of Venti on the top of that one, which kind of looks like he's shocked, which would have been super cute to do too. Like I said, I would like to do more in the future. I don't know if I'll do them as like for a video, but we'll see. Um, also, by the way, I forgot to talk about this. I remember seeing this a long, long time ago on Twitter where it was kind of like a trend of people drawing the, what is it called? These Genshin emotes as like character, not characters, in their own style, I guess, but it's not like in this chibi style. And I thought it always looked very cool. So I would like into the future to do ones that are a little bit more polished and a little bit more finished and probably a little bit more accurate because these ones that I've done, I've definitely taken some liberties on in terms of the expression. So like even for Shao's, I know he's supposed to look like supposed to be looking up a little bit more, but because I'm only taking like several glances at it, I kind of made him look like he's kind of just daydreaming-ish kind of expression, but except for he's not looking upwards in mine. And I feel like even for Toma's, his doesn't look as like frightened or shocked as probably the one for the chibi version. I think chibi's just like become a little bit more emotive just because you can minimize some features and make some features a little bit more um, exaggerated compared to if you draw something a little bit less uh I don't know how you want to say it. I don't want to say chibi's like are deformed, but they're definitely more cartoony and a little bit squishy, right? <laughs> um, back in terms of the comic thing I was talking about, webtoons, um, I don't think, I don't want to like come, like make this come off as discouraging for people. This is just like personal, um, thoughts about it, but I feel like for me, I don't really want to start like a webtoon until I have like a certain repertoire under my belt and I feel like I need to do like several like mock runs or like trial runs of just drawing like panels and stuff like in general just to get a good feel. I know some people, if you have like a story and you know how to draw or you have like a way you want to illustrate it, then feel free to go ahead and make your own kind of webtoon. I'm just like, I'm a little bit wary about releasing a webcomic or a webtoon or anything like that just because I did have like a trial run doing one for 17 as like a fan comic but I was not able to keep up with the I think I only uploaded every two weeks and I was not able to keep up with uploading episodes as well as I wasn't able to I don't know like consistently draw them in a certain way I had a lot of fun like learning about the way how I could frame certain scenes um but I feel like also the style of it was hard for me to keep up because it's not like the usual style that I would work in but it was a lot more simple that it was easier for me to pump out drawings okay so um uh, back to the video we are now working on the third one and it is Kokomi so Kokomi is actually going to be the last one on this canvas and I think if you can tell by the length of this video I'm not going to spend like the next 20 minutes coloring so do not worry about that um so once I finish sketching I will add color and we'll go in and render a little bit for each of them but I am not going to be spending too much time kind of like making them look too finished so after I finished with these three, I will be doing just a sketching session, similar to my Al Haytham sketches that I did last week, where I take the 6B pencil and just sketch. And I did two more um, versions, I guess, of these Genshin emotes. So, yeah. So, right now we have Toma, we have Xiao, and we have Kokomi. Kokomi is a just thought looks super cute. I am going to be changing her hand. So the way how I have her hand right now, it looks like she's more like pointing. I'm going to be making it look like she's reaching out a little bit um, just because I need to change the way how the, fig the fingers look. So yeah, let's change the sketch to multiply. I also duplicated it and then I went to the hue saturation and what's the last one? value brightness slider and changed it to be a little bit more of a warmer brown color so that when we color underneath it appears a lot softer um so yeah i just made a new layer and then i am now coloring uh each of them and i'm just going to take my time to basically get all the colors into the right places but like i said because i'm not going to be spending too much time on each one of these i think i probably spent the most time on toma I think that would made me realize I didn't want to spend too much time because I don't know if it's because I left them a little bit sketchy or I didn't put too much thought into how I draw like drew them. I don't really like how they look, so I didn't want to 
in a sense be like polishing a turd kind of thing because I knew like if I continue to work on it I don't know if it's gonna actually make it better I'm just putting all this excess amount of energy and time into trying to spruce it up but it might not even get to that point of my expectation I guess being reached but um yeah I basically start on Toma first then we'll move on to Shao and then Kokomi and I think Shao, I put the least amount of effort in terms of rendering and fixing just because I think his sketch in general is a little bit more cleaner compared to Toma and especially Kokomi's. Kokomi's I feel like was done so quickly that there's a lot of things I kind of missed. Um, like especially like hair volume and stuff or just like positioning of her hair and maybe some of her accessories on her um, like near her neck and stuff. So yeah, but I thought if I had enough time and energy, I would have tried my best to finish these because I think the last sketching session where I did kind of like a sketch page or what I consider a sketch page was like my one of Dogyam from 17 and that one even though I call it a sketch page it wasn't exactly like sketches I did pretty much finish them to a certain degree um, and they were much more polished compared to these ones but I still had fun working on these like I said I would like to do more in the future um, just maybe not for a video just because it kind of feels like it's a lot more pressure whenever I have to film something for a video I feel like in terms of filming traditional arts a little bit less pressuring sometimes um, just because there's some mistakes I go I won't be able to correct anyways and I usually feel comfortable doing like time lapses and stuff for especially for like watercolor painting or gouache painting because things are going so fast I don't really have to like slow down and think oh I won't have enough time or I, ha I can't make some things drag on for too long because I know some people um, have asked why I don't make shorter videos in terms of for my digital process and the reason being is that every time I uploaded a shorter one or somewhat shorter one because I feel like my videos used to be on the shorter side and then they got really long and then they kind of reverted back to closer to the half an hour mark and if I take like a four hour video or five hour process and I try to cut it down all the way up until like 30 minutes it takes out so much of the process where some people might think like I'm skipping too much or skipping too fast and I know not everyone likes to watch just like time-lapse videos because one it's kind of misleading and two it goes by so fast that your brain can't really process it which is why I like to leave usually the longer process videos as real time and I'm just like cutting itty bitty parts um, and I feel like also it's because I'm gonna see if I can in the future um, this year probably wasn't a good year to do it anyways, but um, maybe a little bit later on this year I might invest into a different editing program. The program that I'm using right now is Cam Camtasia Studio, and I think it's like the version 8. And it continuously crashes on me, especially if I have like itty bitty slices of video, which is why um, sometimes for certain videos, um, some of the slices look a little bit funky or a little bit weird, or if I leave longer chunks, that's usually the reason why. Um, and sometimes when I'm editing, in terms of like adding text and stuff, like especially for ASMR videos, it tends to crash a lot because there's too many elements on my timeline. So I'm, I'm thinking it is Camtasia's problem because I used to think it was my laptop because my laptop's like seven years old. But now that I've switched to a new laptop since like 2021, I think, it's still having the same issue and this laptop's a lot more powerful so it's like I definitely know it's Camtasia's problem so hmm. um, let's talk a little bit about the drawing process again um, as usual I like to basically lock my sketch layer and then change any necessary colors to make it appear softer since it is on a multiply layer it's taking in consideration the colors underneath so after I have those kinds of colors kind of settled in and kind of what I would like them to look like I will then merge my sketch layer onto my color layer and then we can start to render and clean up everything so um when I started working on Toma, I think I mentioned this a little bit earlier, is that I did have the intention of wanting to finish these to a certain more finish, like where they look a little bit more complete. But um, when I get to a certain part of Toma, I realize I didn't want to bring it up to that level of finish. I think it's partially because I didn't spend the time, especially during like my rock coloring phase or what I consider my rock coloring phase, which is basically when I'm initially putting all the colors in, I'm adding shadows, I'm adding some of the lighting, I'm adding like clothing folds and all that jazz. 
I like to establish as much as I can before merging so that I have an easier time um, just cleaning up and focusing on trying to make things look a little bit more complete. But because I left a lot of these things very either light or not very detailed or a little bit more um, simple, I didn't feel like it was too necessary to need to bring them up to a certain finish. Like if you see some of my old drawings, or not my old drawings, just like drawings that I usually post um, onto my Instagram or Twitter or like ones that you guys see for videos, they're a lot more complete usually. So is this kind of like more of a preference thing if anything? So initially, before I actually started to film this session, I was going to do a different session where I was going to do line work because I was doing line work for a different project for a little bit and I was like, mm, maybe doing line work in Procreate isn't like as bad as I thought it would be. So I don't think any of the tools in Procreate are bad. I also don't think it's um, anything to really do at Procreate itself. I think it's just like due to my habits as well as like what I prefer to do usually when I do line work. I still think the stabilization or smoothing tool in paint tool size still 100% my favorite one to do line work with. I think it's just like it's smooth, it's easy to use, there's no like... I just have the least amount of issues with it and I know it's mostly for me it's probably just like a skill issue kind of thing or just because I run into so many habits of doing line work in Paint Tool Sci. Even when I switch to Clip Studio Paint I still struggle with that but I noticed that for Clip Studio Paint and both uh, Procreate is that whenever I do line work I want my line work to be a little bit more natural and a little bit more like less stabilization if that makes sense like I don't mind making it look a little bit more sketchier but when I'm in paint tool sci I can get everything to look super smooth super consistent and like how I want things to look like but I've been trying to dial back like using the stabilization tools or the smoothing tools so I did try it out in procreate once again I actually picked out a Genshin emote of Razor that I wanted to do the one where he's kind of like I don't know if you guys can see it. He's the one literally right next to the Wanderer, the one that's below Kokomi. So I don't know if you guys will see it when I'm panning, but it's like he has his hand or his arm behind his head. He's kind of like sheepishly laughing. It's really cute. Um, and I did the line work for it and I started coloring and I just I just didn't like it. So I deleted the footage and I deleted the, um, the picture because it would garner too many questions, I feel like, rather than if I were just to, you know, delete it. So I deleted it. Even though I do recommend, like, you don't delete your artwork usually, so that you can keep it. But I literally, and I, I really didn't like it at all. So, mm. I think, um, actually, now that I think about it, I think even doing line work in Ivis Paint was a little bit more easier for me. Even though I know a lot of my lines in Ibis Paint were a little bit more wobbly or like the the way that it has like the stabilizer or the streamline or whatever it is in um, Ibis Paint um, is a little bit weird too in my opinion. It might be because like I'm not used to doing line work with the Apple Pencil. I've seen, like I said, like in the beginning, or not in the beginning, in previous videos where I talk about line work, um, there's a lot of people who can do beautiful line work. Um, in Procreate, but I feel like all of them tend to have a pretty strong traditional background in inking. I am very weak when it comes to inking, um, so I would like maybe in the future when I get to do a little bit more traditional work again, I would like to do more inking videos or just like me trying to do more inking, whether or not it's like with screen tone or if it's with watercolor or if it's just pure ink with the what is it called the dip pen or with fine liners or something i would like to do more because that's something i definitely lack especially for traditional art in my opinion i love like soft mediums or mediums that are able to make uh, certain values and stuff when you're able to vary your pressure sensitivity but for inking it's either a black line or it's not a black line basically it's just whether or not the thickness or the like the thickness or thinness is uh, changing so yeah um, the last thing I'm doing is adding a white border to all of the characters and if any characters in front I'll make sure that the white um, border is kind of like in front of them so they look like they're overlapping I'm adding their names and usually when I do these kind of doodles or sketches I add in arrows Apologies if you guys can hear that. I actually don't know if that's my driveway or my neighbor's driveway. Someone is shoveling and it's so dang loud. So apologies if you guys can hear that. 
um, add a little bit of a drop shadow to the text and now you guys can see the quick little time lapse i'll also put a closer view of the time lapse in the not in the description at the very end of the video so you guys can see it without being disrupted um, and you can see it being a little bit more clear i also didn't realize this um i had to delete my webcam app and re-downloaded it uh, just because it was having a little bit of issues with the settings and I didn't realize that the default is 720. I think it's 1080 by 720 or something like that. Or it's like a little bit lower. I think it's 1280. 1280 by 720. And then the next one is like 10, like nine. No, I don't even know what the other uh, ratio is, but basically it's a bit lower quality. So I don't know if it's too noticeable now that I'm filming with it and I'm editing the video. I'm not too sure if it's too noticeable for you guys. If it is, so sorry. It'll be back to normal in the next video where I do anything with my webcam. So like I said at the beginning of the video, I wanted to include a few more sketches because I kind of like... Once I started working on Toman, I realized how big I drew him. I knew I wasn't going to fit more than three on the thick canvas. And that became very evident when I started to draw Xiao and I could barely fit Kokomi into the canvas. So I decided that I wanted to work with a few more. I'm only going to add two more to this, but I'm going to be treating it very similar to how I work with traditional medium. And I decided to use the 6B pencil. So I think I have a few videos where I use the 6B pencil and... I think the most recent one's the one that I did for Al High Thumb last week. And yeah, it's just very similar to how I work with traditional medium, especially like the mechanical pencil. I'm able to really build up value if I really need to, but I can also sketch um, quite lightly if I need to um, for some things, or I can just really take things really carefully and build up that really kind of rich black color. I guess in this case, I'm still sketching with my kind of pale, muted purple. Not pale, it's muted. Muted, muted dark purple, there we go, uh, that I usually sketch with. And that's just basically my own preference. Um, usually in Paint Sai, I think I sketch with whatever color I'm sketching the character in. Usually it's darker and a little bit more muted as well. But when I'm working on like the tablet, let's say Clip Studio Paint or on Pencil Sai, the color just varies and I usually know that I'm going to be like dimming the color a little bit so I don't mind that it's just really dark and it's usually a little bit more muted. But for Procreate, I like to keep things a little bit consistent just because I know how it's going to behave when I turn the color to multiply. Also, for people wondering, whenever I'm using a brush for the most part in procreate if you look on the left side of procreate i know it's gonna be weirdly in like i don't know uh one third of the the video screen but you can see where the undo button is and where like the center button for procreate is so the bar that's the closest to the undo button the vertical one um, you can see that's not touching the top so that's basically the opacity of your brush and i think for the majority of my brushes i almost never have it touching the very top um, because i like being able to kind of play around with that plus the pressure sensitivity in procreate to get a certain texture or a lightness that i really like so when i'm using the 6b pencil I like being able to build up value so that I don't want it to be super dark upon first mark. Uh, just like pencil, like unless you're pressing super hard, you're not gonna get like a super dark. Is that gonna be, hopefully, wait, can you guys hear that? I think you can kind of hear it. Hopefully it's not too audible. I can't, I really can't tell if it's us or my neighbors, um, but it has like the snow plow kind of machine thing to get rid of snow. Um, yeah, it's been really cold where I am. It's like negative. I think according to my dad, it got to negative 39 with the wind chill. But we have a friend who lives more into like the prairies and stuff. And they had almost negative 50 with the wind chill. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of glad that it's not as cold here. I remember like in my uni days, it would be almost negative 40 with the wind chill. And you can just like, imagine like you're breathing into, I usually have a scarf like around my face. So I'd be breathing into my scarf and the condensation would like breathe up into like my eyelashes and then my eyelashes, as soon as I blink, it'll be like immediately has frost on it. It really sucked, but I lived really close to my classes and campus. So it wasn't too um, bad of a, like a commute, if anything. I know a lot of my friends had to commute like an hour and a half. I think, yeah, an hour and a half by train and bus. So that must've really sucked, especially during the winter time. Um, 
Yeah. Okay, so the sketches, because I kind of went through uh, Tinari's quite quickly. So we did Tinari first, and I did the little one that has him like pressing down his ears. I'm not too sure if he's just kind of sensitive about like don't touch my ears kind of thing or is it because with the little uh, thunderbolt emotes is he scared of thunder i'm not too sure if he is but yeah i thought this looked really cute so i wanted to draw it the other one i wanted to draw was goro this is not my best goro let me tell you i i feel kind of bad of how i drew goro today so we'll see in the future if i can redo a few Goro drawings because he's one of my favorite characters. He's so, so cute. So I, I definitely want to draw him a little bit more and kind of do a proper drawing of him. Like I mentioned in previous videos, I would like to do some redraws of some of the Genshin portraits that I've done in the past because there's a great deal of them where I find them extremely derpy and I would like to redo them. And Toma and Goro are definitely two of them for sure that I would like to redo. I'm actually gonna see if I can wait to see if this snowblower thing can... Is it getting picked up by the mic? I hope not. I really don't. Ah. I feel like he's not gonna leave anytime soon, so I'm just gonna do the voiceover <laughs> regardless if the guy's still snowblowing. So for Goro, I thought this one looked really cute. Like I said, for the other ones, I didn't exaggerate it as much as like the little chibis are. So I kind of wish I drew him a little bit more cute and a little bit more excited. It's definitely something I would like to do in the future, like I mentioned, but I don't know. I think it's a good exercise. Like I said, I don't really draw too many other emotions other than there's like a definitely a select few. Like I do a lot of happy ones, more serene looking ones. Um, a little bit more of like a pained expression. I don't draw a lot of like crying expressions or ones of fear. Um, but maybe, maybe I'll do that. It'll be a good experiment or like exercise to do with OCs as well if I don't want to do them for Genshin characters. Because a part of me, even though I really wanted to do this kind of version for the Genshin characters where I would draw them in my style with the similar expressions, they're, the details and stuff in them kind of makes my brain hurt a little bit, so maybe drawing Masaki or Koji, Sato or Akemi with the expressions, or even Hansuke at this point, it might be a good exercise to do just because I can simplify uh, the character a little bit and have the expression be kind of like the main focal point. Um, so similar to all my Al Haitham sketches that I did last week, I made a new layer, added white so I could pull out some of the highlights in the hair, in the eyes, on the face or anything like that that I need to have it be a little bit more brighter. And then after that, I made another new layer, added a border. I did switch brushes to my sketch brush rather than the 6B, just because like I said, the 6B has the pencil so that's not at max opacity. So I didn't want to press too hard, so I did choose the sketch brush over the 6B. Um, yeah, and I think that's about it. I had a lot of fun doing Tinetti's because his the values of the blacks look so good when it's like kind of sketchy like this. But hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. I know it's kind of weird and sporadic in terms of the sketches, but I hope you guys enjoy it nonetheless. Um, and maybe I'll do this again in the future. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!